Hello everyone. So this is a sidestep from the measure theory. Uh, this I was interested in doing a video on this cross currency swaps because uh, this discussion occurred with one of my colleagues and uh, I know where the confusion lies now because it's so common instrument but when beginners start to use it they get confused because first they learn interest rate swap which is commonly known as IRS and then they move to cross currency and the convention is confusing so rather than walking you through the calculations I will pay more attention on the intuition part which is kind of where people make mistakes or students make mistakes so you know IRS everybody knows IRS that you have this not the tax return the you pay fixed and in, in swaps you always think of like in fixed terms that you are paying fixed or receiving fixed and you receive uh, floating so you pay fixed you receive floating this is common structure of IRS and okay this is let's say on a currency US dollar now when people think of this this they learn they assume that this is same as cross currency swap where you have two payments the usd guy is usd euro and this is libor this is euribor minus 10 bits let's say so basically the person who is transferring usd pays libor the person who is transferring euro pays euribor minus 10 bits this is where things go wrong because this is not correct this is not what cross currency swaps are for if you are transferring initial usd you don't pay libor if you are transferring euro you don't pay euribor minus 10 bips and why this intuition goes wrong is because i think it is taught in terms of cash flows in most books if you try to think from a perspective why this all happens then you will automatically be able to correct the cash flows so this is a wrong way and if somebody knows the flows they will think okay i'm talking stupid but yes this is a wrong cash flow what happens actually in cross currency why somebody needs a cross currency let's say i am a european bank uh, okay not to be too obvious maybe a european company let's say a uh, European company name maybe Omega I don't know if it's an American company but okay let's say Omega wants to raise uh, in US some cash so it issues a bond in USA let's say maybe at some interest that's like a separate part I will not deal with that why that interest rate is decided but let's say it issues a bond in us at five percent rate which is the fixed coupon that the person will get if he buys this bond in us right so basically let's say total notional issued was 1 million usd and it has been subscribed so basically this company omega has a cash flow of 1 million usd it has to pay out the coupon when the time comes but initially it has this cash flow what can I do with this cash flow because it has to generate this coupon somehow let's say it can enter into the market and uh, maybe get LIBOR by 5% so basically it can pay LIBOR and receive 5% and this 5% it will pass to the bondholder where it will get LIBOR from here is where the cross currency swap comes in whatever money it has received in USD it swaps to euro in its home currency because it this it pays and this it receives and basically when it pays in USD it has to 
pay because it is receiving euro now it has to pay back the interest in euro terms so let's say this interest is euribor minus 10 bits and it receives interest on usd which is let's say libor pays this and receives this. Note that initially the European corporation got USD. It exchanged this USD for Euro. So basically I am borrowing Euros or in a way I am converting my USD to Euro. Since I am giving USD to somebody, I will pay, I will receive interest in USD. It's like giving a loan to someone in USD. I will receive my interest in USD, which is let's say LIBOR. Because by convention, usually they what they do is they say LIBOR versus Eurobor plus X pips, where X can be positive, negative, whatever. You can have the sign, and this is the interest received. So basically, I pay. Euribor minus 10 bits on my loan and I get LIBOR. I receive LIBOR and this LIBOR I can pay to the interest rate swap to get 5% fixed coupon and which I can pass to my bond holder. This is kind of like a asset swap thing but that's the intuition behind cross currency swaps. So overall what happened, just to summarize, Omega issued a bond. This is a European company. It issued a bond in USD and it says that it will get 5% coupon. To finance this 5% coupon, it enters into a IRS where it pays LIBOR let's say I'm assuming that LIBOR is equal into 5% these are some assumptions that are being done and it receives 5% so that it can pay this here and this LIBOR how will it get by doing a cross currency swap where the initial notional it exchanges because he got the notional also right so this notional he pays to a cross currency owner and receives euro back and it pays this Omega pays Euribor minus 10 bips and gets paid LIBOR. That's the whole cash flow. I have omitted many of the details, but that's the intuition behind why the cash flows are opposite. So, I mean, that's the structure why it was designed this way. And if you think in those terms, then you will never get confused in terms of a loan. If you always correlate with the IRS, you always get confused. I know it becomes a second nature when you are dealing with these things daily. But, I mean, it's something you have to learn one day or the other when you are dealing in finance. This is basic 101 of finance. Okay, so short video. Hope it helps. Thank you.